happy morning children happy, happy morning children hope all are fine and doing good in last class we discussed about health diseases uh, under diseases we discussed about infectious and non infectious diseases so under infectious diseases uh, bacterial viral fungal helminthic protozoan diseases we discussed today we will uh, we will see about immunity can anyone say what is immunity any idea about immunity resistance to fight against pathogens yeah so it is the ability of an organism so it is the ability of an organism to resist or defend itself from the development of a disease so the immunity power which is naturally it is there in our body which will fight against the foreign particles that is called as immunity so there are two types of immunity is there one is innate immunity another one is acquired immunity so types of immunity under immunity innate immunity and acquired immunity so under innate immunity uh, it is uh, present from the birth and it is inherited from the parents so from the parents we will get the immunity that is called as innate immunity so it is non specific type of defense it will not specifically uh, defense for the particular uh, thing it will be non specific and uh, it is accomplished by providing different types of barriers to entry of foreign agents there are four types of barriers are there so under innate immunity four types of barriers physical barriers psychological barriers cellular barriers and cytokinin barriers so under physical barriers so the under physical barrier these barriers do not allow pathogens and foreign agents to enter the body so these barriers do not allow pathogens and foreign agents to enter the body so skin mucous membrane digestive and respiratory and urinary genital tract which will trapping the microorganism they have the mucous membrane in that so that sticky substance will trap the microorganism which will not allow the entry of microorganisms so the second one under innate immunity is psychological barrier so psychological barrier uh, sweat your tears from eyes acid in the stomach saliva in the mouth which will prevent the microbial growth which will prevent the microbial growth that is called as psychological barriers so the next one cellular barriers we know about the cell which is doing the uh, which is fighting against the foreign particle that is uh, wbc so wbc which has a polymorphonuclear leukocytes that is pmnl pmnl means polymorphonuclear leukocytes neutrophils and monocytes this all are blood components blood cells which is present in the wbc which will fight against the foreign particles they are monocytes are called as natural killer lymphocytes and macrophages which is a large wbc which has the ability to eat with that is phagocytosis phagocytosis means what is meant by phagocytosis digestion of pathogen so uh, it will engulf the pathogen so macrophages has the ability to engulf the pathogen and it will destroy the microbes so under cellular barriers wbc monocytes and macrophages are involved the fourth innate immunity is cytokine barriers so here we have a protein called interferons so this protein will be produced by virus infected cells so this protect the non infected cells from further viral infection see actually the protein which will be produced by the viral infected cells uh, further infection will be stopped by this interferon proteins so under innate immunity four different uh, barriers are there physical psychological sorry physiological cellular and cytokine barriers so the next one is acquired immunity so acquired immunity from the word itself you can say it is not present in, from the birth but it will develops during an individual's lifetime it will be uh, during the lifetime we will get that immunity that is called as acquired immunity so it is pathogen specific 
So we can give an example, the chicken pox also. Once you get a chicken pox, again, you will get, we will not get the chicken pox because your body is know the response, how to respond for first time when it is entering in your body, your body may know, may don't know how to react with that particular foreign particle. But when it is attacking for the second time, sure, your body has the ability to react against the foreign particles. So acquired immunity, there are two immune responses will be there under acquired immunity. One is primary immune response, another one is secondary immune response. Under primary immune response, when pathogen encounters the body for the first time, our body responds by producing initial response. So first time when the foreign particle is entering, the response will be called as primary immune response. So in the beginning, the intensity will be very low. So it has very low intensity. When the same pathogen encounter again the body, the, uh, the reaction will be highly intensified. That is called as secondary immune response or an amnestic response. So secondary response produced in body is due to memory of the first encounter of the pathogen. So two types of response. Primary response will be produced when the pathogen, pathogen is entering for the first time to in our body. Secondary immune response, when the same pathogen encounters again, the body will react intensively. The high response will be there. The high uh, intensity will be there when it is attacking for the second time. So types of acquired immunity. So two types of acquired immunity is there. So one is antibody mediated immunity or humoral immunity, or we can call it as AMI. AMI means antibody mediated immunity or humoral immunity. Another one is cell mediated immunity that is called as CMI. CMI. So the next one, tissues. Which tissues involved in acquired immunity? You studied in your 11th standard, that is B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes, which is produced in the, it's also called as B cells, produced in bone marrows. T lymphocytes, also called as T cells, which is produced in the thymus, right? So tissues involved in acquired immunity are B lymphocytes, which will produce antibodies, T lymphocytes, which help B cells to produce antibodies. So two types of lymphocytes. So first we'll see AMI, that is antibody mediated acquired immunity. So antibody mediated acquired immunity, which includes, uh, it is mediated by uh, antibodies in the blood and the plasma, that is lymphocytes of WBC, B cells and T cells mediate the process of primary and secondary immune response. When a pathogen invades the body, when it is entering inside the body, B lymphocytes identifies that as a foreign substance. So foreign substance, we will give a name as antigen. Okay. So the foreign substance will be called as antigen and responds by producing an army of protein called antibodies. The substance which is going to fight against the antigen is called as antibodies. So antibodies are proteins which fight against the pathogen to eradicate them from the body. So T lymphocytes, T lymphocytes are here, that is T cells, which will help B cells to produce more number of antibodies. So since antibodies are found in blood, this immunity response is also called as humoral immunity response. Any doubts, uh, doubt in antibody mediated acquired immunity? Okay, so the next, so here we have a, a diagram showing that how the lymphocytes is releasing the antibody. See the Y-shaped structure here. So Y-shaped uh, structures, that is antibodies. Here you have an antigen. Bo the antibodies will bind with the antigen. It will eradicate totally from the body. Okay, this is called as humoral immunity. So next one is antibodies. What is antibody? Antibodies are protein molecules. Antibodies are protein molecules called immunoglobulins. So we can write that immunoglobulin as Ig. Okay, antibodies are protein molecules called immunoglobulin. We can write immunoglobulin as Ig. There are four types of immunoglobulins are there. That is antibodies, IgA, IgM, IgE, IgG. So four different types of antibodies are there. The immunoglobulins are there. So IgA, you can see uh, the IgA, the antibody which is present in the breast milk, 
uh, it is called as colostrum. The first milk uh, which is produced uh, during the lactation period by the mother that is called as IgA, which contain more amount of IgA, which will uh, induce more immunity in the infants, the babies. So IgM, IgE and IgG, IgE is involved in allergic reactions. Whenever allergy is there in our body, the IgE antibody is response for that, which will show the hypersensitivity reaction in our body. IgG is most prevalent antibody in the blood followed by IgA and IgM. When a foreign substance is entering in our body, all these antibodies will show their reaction and they will start fighting against the foreign particles. An antibody has a Y-shaped structure. So you can see the structure here. So each antibody molecules, so antibodies are proteins produced by lymphocytes. A molecule of antibody consists of four polypeptide chain. Each antibody molecule consists of four polypeptide chain. So two are long called as heavy chain and two, um, while well, other two are short called light chains. Hence, an antibody is represented by H2 and L2. H2 is two heavy chain, L2 is two light chain. Okay, so different antibodies already I said, uh, which is produced in our body, IgA, IgM, IgE, IgG, and IgD. So these are the different types of antibodies produced in our body. Okay, so here you can see the antibody structure. So uh, in the Y-shaped structure of antibody, the antigen binding sites are there. Okay, and you can see the black color SS thing that is uh, disulfide bonds, which is connecting a heavy chain and the light chains. Okay, so SS is a disulfide bonds, which is connecting the heavy chain and the light chain. Antigen binding site in both the corners of the Anti, uh, antibodies, we have an antigen binding site. So there only the antigen will come and bind. Okay, any doubts? Ma'am, explain once again, ma'am. Which one? Antibodies. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so antibodies are proteins produced by lymphocytes. So a molecule of antibody it has four peptide chains, okay? Two light chains and two heavy chains. So the longer one you can see, you know, the long one is heavy chain. The shorter one, both the sides, you have short chains that is called as light chain, okay? So heavy chain, which will be represented as H2 and short chain, that is light chain, which is represented as L2, okay? So this heavy chain and light chains are bounded with a disulfide bonds. So in between, you can see SACS is there. It is a disulfide bonds. And both the Y, corner of the Y, you can see antigen binding sites where the antigen will come and bind. What is antigen? Pathogen. Uh, yeah, foreign substance. You can say foreign substance or pathogen. pathogen. Is it clear, Vetri? Yes, ma'am. So acquired... Uh, AMI is over, acquired mediated immunity is done. The next one is cell mediated immunity, that is CMI, okay? So it is mediated by T lymphocytes, that is macrophages and neutrophils. T cells identify the infected cells which express antigen on its surface. So it will release some granules on the surface of the infected cell. So the T cells will identify the infected cell which will express antigen on its surface. And uh, see, they will find the antigen and they will release some granules on the surface of the uh, antigen. And uh, it will release a protein called cytokine, which disrupt the infected cells for transplant. When the person is going for transplantation of organ transplantation, which is called as grafts, okay, G-R-A-F-T-S, grafts. So for transplantation of human organs like heart, eye, liver, kidneys, is very much important to find the suitable donor. So blood we can donate easily from one person to another person by uh, screening the blood. So what type of blood, O positive, O negative like that. But when you are doing for uh, organ transplantation, tissue matching, blood grouping matching, a suitable donor we have to find to do the transplantation. Grafts for transplant transplantation cannot be obtained from any animal or primate or any human being Actually, what will happen, her body has the ability to find self-organ and non-self-organ. So what they will do, our body automatically will reject the 
new uh, after recognizing whether it is a self or non self it automatically reject reject the organs okay so to avoid this complications they have to go for tissue matching blood group matching and the, they have to find a suitable donor after transplantation patient has to take immunosuppressants because the immune uh, or immune um, immune system of our body has the ability to find the self or non self organs so they the person who undergone for transplantation they have to take immune suppressant in their lifetime okay so otherwise the body will differentiate between self and non self and graft rejection will takes place because of cell mediated immune response any doubt in cell mediated immune response no ma'am okay so here we have a how the mechanism of cell mediated response here you can see the t cells is releasing the cytotoxic t cells which is releasing the cytokinins okay so the cell which is attacked the t cells makes a contact of release granules virus infect the host cell the host cell is totally attacked by the viruses you can see the virus particles and you have can see mhc mhc is major histocompatibility complex so which will help to recognize the foreign particles mhc is a protein which will help to recognize the foreign particles so because of this recognition so what will happen the cytokinins will release more granules and at last it will destroy the uh, that particular cell itself they will destroy granules induce a cell to self destruct virus cannot replicate because of destruction of the cell the virus will not replicate okay so this is a mechanism of cell mediated response so next we have active and passive immunity immunity conferred in body is basically of two type active and passive so under active so under active uh, we can say it is developed due to a contact with a pathogen or its antigen that lead to production of antibodies in the host body see it is automatically uh, naturally it happened so due to the contact with the pathogen example as uh, i said uh, chicken pox so if we get a infection our body is ready to react but it is a slow process it will take time but it has no uh, side effects but some example we can say vaccination polio something and injecting microbes deliberately you during the immunization or infecting uh, infection organism entering body induce active immunity automatically by naturally we are inducing the immunity but it will take certain time to produce the immunization the immunization process will take a time to produce the immunity against the pathogen so here slow process and it takes time to give its full effective response reasons for active immunity generated in body due to infection of mild nat natured microbes during immunization or when infectious organism enter body during natural infection which will induce active immunity so mechanism of active immunity here wherever you will go the immunity will includes b and t cells b cells and the t cells microbes enters the body which will identified by b and t lymphocytes as antigen and in response to that body produce antibody specific to that particular antigen antibodies then act against the pathogen and provide immune response so this is called as active immunity the next one is passive immunity so under passive immunity it is a quick process and does not take time to show immune response reason for passive immunity uh, generated in body when ready when the body is ready actually directly they'll give the antibodies for the particular pathogen it will be injected directly into the body that is called as passive immunity not by natural method one directly they are injecting the antibodies into the human beings so mechanism of passive immunity when antibodies against specific antigen is directly injected to blood stream body develops immune response against the pathogen in absence of pathogen due to antibodies thus when pathogen invades body the immune response is quickly shown since antibodies are directly injected the b cells that is uh, b and t cells responsible to produce antibodies does not involve there is quick immune response so here we are, already i said the colostrum the yellowish fluid secreted by the mother during initial period of lactation 
the IgA antibodies, which produce immunity to infant and fetus, also get some antibodies through the placenta. Through the mother placenta also, the antibody will reach the baby. So passive immunity is a ready-made antibodies. Active immunities are developed due to contact with pathogen. Okay, any doubts between these two? No, ma'am. Okay, so again, I'm repeating active immunity is developed due to contact with pathogens or with the antigens. So naturally, it may take place. Passive immunity is developed when ready made antibodies are, antibodies are injected into the body to protect against the foreign agents. So the next one is vaccination. Can you name some vaccines? Can you say? Penicillin. Polio. Penicillin is antibiotic. Yeah, polio is good. Then, BCG vaccine, typhoid vaccine. Yeah, hepatitis vaccine, uh, diphtheria vaccine. Yeah, so many vaccines are available. Why we should take vaccine? Why we should take vaccine? To immunize to our body. protect us, ma'am. Yeah, to protect us, to immunize our body. To immun for the immunization purpose, we are taking the vaccine. So vaccine is the, vaccination is the process of introduction of weakened or inactivated pathogens or proteins into a person to provide protection against a disease. That is called as vaccination. So here, uh, vaccination, the principle of uh, vaccination is property of memory of the immune system. So immune system is a good example for memory. Once the pathogen enter in our body, it will recognize easily when it is coming for the second time. So second attack, if, I'm, if uh, the person is attacked by the first time, the low intensity will be there. That is primary immune response. Because of primary immune response, the intensity will be low. But when it is attacking for the second time, sure, our body will fight vigorously with the particular pathogen. So vaccination are antigenic proteins of pathogen or activated or weakened pathogen. Uh, they will, if a typhoid vaccine they are preparing from that particular species, one particular bacteria, Salmonella typhi is causing typhoid. From that itself, which is uh, not that much virulent, that type of bacteria, less virulent, non-virulent bacteria, they will take. From that, they will prepare a, uh, they will inject that non-virulent bacteria, they will inject into the human body and they will induce the antibodies, the antibodies produced in the body against that particular antigen. So it is already immunized. Your memory power was twisted. So your body is ready to fight for that particular pathogen. So that is the vaccination. So naturally, we are giving a particular uh, weakened pathogen into our body, which will fight, uh, which will induce the B cells and T cells so that your body can recognize quickly on subsequent exposure and overwhelm the invent, uh, invading with a massive production of an antibodies. And another method of producing uh, vaccines that is recombinant DNA technology that we'll study in biotechnology lesson. So recombinant biotechnology, DNA technology also will helpful to produce more amount of antibodies. And uh, one example of antibody uh, is given here, vaccine is given here, hepatitis B vaccine, which is produced from the yeast. So vaccines produced using this approach allow large scale production and hence greater availability for immunization. An example you will get in one mark question, hepatitis B vaccine, which is produced from the yeast. Hepatitis B vaccine. The next one is immunization. So immunization, after vaccination, your body is immunized. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Immunization is a process whereby a person is made immune or resistant to an infectious disease. Typically, by the administration of vaccine, vaccine stimulates the body's own immune system to protect the person against subsequent infection or disease. There are two types of, so same what we studied under active and passive immunity, the same here, active immunization, passive immunization. Active immunization, slow immune response, infected from a mild dosage of dead and pre-treated live microbes. Example, measles, mumps, rubella. Passive immunization will show quick immune response. Okay, so direct injection of 
preformed antibodies or antitoxin a preparation containing antibodies to the toxin here one more example for passive immunization snake bites uh, the injection which is given to the patient which contain preformed antibodies against the snake venom so against the snake venom the preformed antibodies will be available that will be injected to the infected person okay that is passive immunization allergies any idea about allergies will say no always will say this one is allergy for me that one is allergy for me what is mean by allergy so allergies allergies is hypersensitivity disorder of immune system in which exaggerated response to of the immune takes place to certain antigen present in the environment so pollen dust we discussed as a dust uh, dust allergy it may cause dust allergy uh, animals fur that is animal dander mites everything may cause the uh, allergies sometimes a uh, food uh, the non vegetarian foods when we will take sometimes it, we will get allergy in our body some medicines may cause some antibiotics may cause allergy some cosmetics may cause allergy right so why this allergy cause the allergy will be shown because of the antibody ige so reason for the antibody ige are produced in response to allergens so ige will react first it will show it will be present in our blood so symptoms of allergy sneezing water eyes running nose and difficulty in breathing so reason what is the causes uh, release of chemicals like histamine and serotonin from the mast cells mast cells means cells which is filled with basophil granules in numbers in connective tissues and which will release the histamine histamine is a protein which will be released by the mast cells mast cells which contain more amount of granules basophil granules blood cells okay so diagnose yes where are these mast cells are present from in our blood only okay in our blood only okay near the connective tissues you can find the mast cells and in your blood also you can find diagnosis how to diagnose injecting small dosage see when you are going for some test they will uh, make a circle in your hand they will inject in that particular place okay some drugs they will test in your body whether it is showing allergy or whether it is reacting with your body whether it is not reacting with your body by making a circle in your hand okay they will uh, wait for 24 hours so after that only they will use that particular antibiotics those people are going for surgery they will test the antibiotics by making a circle in their hand they will inject that particular antibody in their body and they will find whether it is making a allergy in that particular person then only they will use that particular antibody for treatment here diagnosis injecting small dosage of possible allergens and reaction are observed drugs antihistamine adrenaline and steroids quickly reduce the symptoms of allergy so because of this uh, modern day lifestyle has lowered the immunity power and increased the sensitivity to allergen so protected environment which totally lowered the immunity and thus uh, more and more people are now sensitive to the allergens is it clear we'll move to the next slide yes ma'am okay so the next one is auto immunity auto immunity it is an abnormal immune response in which the immune system of the body start rejecting its own body cells so own body cells will be get rejected that is cell cells body cells or cell cells will be rejected so hence body attacks cell cells damaging the body our own body will be get uh, auto auto immunity means failure of the organism to find uh, or to recognize the own body part that is called as auto immunity so here we have a example of disease rheumatoid arthritis it's a auto immune disease so auto immunity is a failure of an organism in recognizing its own constituent part as self thus leading to an immune response against its own cells and tissues 
higher vertebrates evolved and developed its ability to differentiate foreign organisms that is pathogens or molecule from cell cell so our body know that which is our cell which is the foreign particle but sometimes due to genetic or other unknown reasons uh, body attack self cells autoimmune diseases so example is rheumatoid arthritis one more example is there that is called as addison uh, disease so addison disease a d d i s o n s addison disease so adrenal glands produce insufficient amount of the hormone when we need more amount to see when we are in uh, excited moment when we are in scared moment adrenal will secrete more amount of adrenaline but in this addison disease adrenal gland will produce insufficient amount of adrenal hormone so it may cause addison disease okay ma'am how can this be treated ma'am this r a see there is no uh, no specific treatment as given uh, thing see it is uh, only the immunosuppressive agent we can give immunosuppressant we can give to control okay so the next one is immune system so immune system is a system of biological structure and processes within an organism which protects organism against any diseases and also help to identify self from non self and remembers them so memory power is called immune system or memory power so structures associated with the immune system that is components of immune system lymphoid organs tissue and cells are called as immune cells soluble molecules like antibodies and one more thing is lymphoid tissues one more is called lymphoid tissues see unique as it recognize the foreign antigen it recognize the foreign antigens and responds to these remember them so functions important role in allergic reaction autoimmune disease and organ transplantation so lymphoid organs so organs uh, where it will origin and uh, will get matured and proliferation where it will increase there are two types of lymphoid organs primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs so primary lymphoid organs consist of two things one is bone marrow another one is thymus secondary lymphoid organs consist of three main things one is spleen lymph nodes and mucosal associated lymphoid tissues so primary lymphoid organs the origin maturation and proliferation of immune cells will takes place in bone marrow and thymus that is b cell in bone marrow t cell in thymus during proliferation during increasing when it is increasing and maturation immature lymphocytes differentiated into antigen sensitive lymphocytes and after maturation after the maturation they may move to they will migrate to secondary lymphoid organs of so primary lymphoid organs they will be in the particular place and it will get matured and increase in number then it will move to the secondary lymphoid organs so secondary lymphoid organs which will provide the site for interaction of lymphocytes with the antigen and then lymphocytes proliferate to become effector cells spleen lymph nodes tonsils pear patches what is pear patches it is a ileum region of the small intestine okay so pear patches is the ileum region of the small intestine and appendix so secondary lymphoid organs it's present in spleen lymph nodes tonsils pears patches of small intestine and appendix so here you can see the lymphoid organs so tonsils thymus lymph nodes lymphatic vessels spleen pear patches in small intestine appendix and the bone marrow so these are the lymphoid organs so functions of lymphoid organs so what are the main functions of lymphoid organs so primary lymphoid organs bone marrow and thymus which provide micro environment for development and maturation of t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes bone marrow main lymphoid organ where all blood cells including lymphocytes are produced thymus is located uh, lobe, uh, lobed organ located near the heart and beneath the breast bone see the thymus will be uh, larger in the beginning uh, in the time of birth it will be larger in size but it will get reduced in size by the time of puberty it 
attained, it's reduced to be a very small in size. Then the spleen, spleen is being shaped and contain lymphocytes and phagocytosis act as a filter of the blood by trapping blood-borne microorganisms. Spleen also has a larger reservoir of erythrocytes. Erythrocytes means? RBC. RBC. Yes, okay. So lymph nodes, small solid structures located at different points along the lymphatic system, which also have the ability to trap microorganisms, that is antigens, which enters limbs and tissue fluids and activates lymphocytes causing immune responses. Lymphoid tissues, which will line at the major tract, see most our respiratory tract, our digestive tract, urinogenital tract, all which contain a mucus, right? Which is called as MALT, M-A-L-T, mucosal associated lymphoid tissues. Okay, it is a MALT. And there are 50% of the lymphoid tissues in human being, uh, human body. That is mucus will be there in most of the part of our body. So the next one, HIV. Any idea about HIV? What is HIV? Human? Human immunodeficiency virus. The AIDS? Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Good, good. So AIDS, it's acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, uh, disease caused due to the deficiency of immune system. Actually, the virus which attacks the immune system of the human being. So that's what it is called as human immunodeficiency virus. So disease and syndrome acquired during the lifetime of individual indicating that it is not a congenital disease. It was first reported in 1981 and last 25 years, 25 million persons were killed because of HIV. So causative organism is human immunodeficiency virus, that is HIV virus. It belongs to a group of retrovirus, HIV, which is belong to the group of retrovirus. The RNA virus having RNA genome enclosed by a protein coat. The RNA, which is present inside, you can see the picture here which the red color thing is called as RNA stands. The viral genome is RNA, which is encoded by a protein coat and glycoprotein will be there outside and it has a capsid also. So mode of transmission, how the transmission of HIV occurs by the following way it may occur by sexual contact with the infected person, by transmission of, uh, transmission of contaminated blood and blood products, by sharing infected needles, uh, mostly the drug abusers, they will go, they will share the same needles from infected mother to her child through placenta. So it is not spread by more touch or by physical contact. It's only spread through body fluids. So individual with multiple sexual partners. So high risk individuals, we can say this, these peoples are high risk individual. That is those having multiple sexual partners, drug addicts taking the drug intravenously individuals who require repeated blood transfusion and children born to an HIV infected mother, they have high risk of HIV, AIDS. Okay, high risk of, risk of AIDS. So cause of infection only the, through the body fluid, uh, not by touch or physical contact. So it takes how many uh, incubation period of HIV AIDS is, it takes few months to few years between infection and the appearance of the symptoms. Mostly five to ten uh -huh. years. How will Akshya mute yourself? How will? So mechanism of mechanism of action and replication of HIV. HIV is a RNA virus. Its structure includes identical RNA strands. So actually, when the uh, viral entering the human body the RNA strand will be converted into DNA with the help of an enzyme reverse, reverse transcriptase. Okay, so its structure includes identical RNA strand reverse transcriptase, which are enclosed in a protein coat. Target cell of HIV is macrophages. So macrophages will do the engulfing process, which will eat the phagocytosis, which will do the phagocytosis, which will engulf the foreign particles. So HIV has the ability to attack the main macrophages and T lymphocytes, T cells. HIV bind, first binds to the receptor on the host macrophage where fusion of HIV takes place. The, only the genome will enter inside the host.
host cell full coat full viral coat will not enter inside the host cell the rna viral rna released in cytoplasm which undergo reverse transcription with reverse transcriptase enzyme so with the help of a reverse transcriptase enzyme which will be the rna will be converted into dna viral dna so now the viral dna enters the host nucleus and integrated with the host dna transcription so along with human transcription when the dna is transcripting the new viral rna forms viral genome and some translates into cytoplasm to new viral protein so help with the help of the host dna the viral dna is converted into viral rna and it will continuously multiply in number more number of viral proteins will be released so viral protein and rna moves to surface of cell and buds off as new hiv the main target cell of, of hiv is t lymphocytes if the t lymphocytes is attacked the number of t lymphocytes will get uh, the number of uh, t lymphocytes will get decrease because of that the person is unable to produce any immune response even against small bacterial infection also that's what the total uh, immune system will get collapsed so here we have a flow chart the same it is given in your textbook also so retrovirus will enter the animal cell that is human cell so viral in only the rna will enter inside the body viral rna is introduced into the cytoplasm of a cell so here with the help of a enzyme reverse transcriptase the rna will be converted into dna so this viral dna will incorporated into genome of the nucleus okay along with this it will get incorporated and it will release a new viral rna is produced by the infected cell so the infected cell will produce new viral rna so new virus are produced which will infect the other cell so it will go on it will go on like this main attack it will attack the t cells okay so symptoms hiv attacks helper t lymphocytes reducing of helper t lymphocytes cause cellular immune deficiency uh, bouts of fever that is short period of fever will be there diarrhea and weight, uh, weight loss will be there highly susceptible to mycobacterium mycobacterium causes tuberculosis in human beings okay viruses fungi and parasites like toxoplasma so these are the infection they will get easy because the immune system is totally blocked diagnosis how to diagnose diagnose test for aids is elisa it's called as enzyme linked immunosorbent assay okay it is a, uh, the principle the elisa will work on the principle of antigen antibody reaction you will get in one mark question elisa is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay treatment of aids with anti retroviral drugs drugs are available they are partially effective they will not cure the disease okay they cannot prevent the death drugs can only prolong the life of the patient but cannot prevent death when uh, which is inevitable we cannot uh, prevent the death of the patient so prevention so only the way method to prevent the aids educating the people to generate awareness among them national aids organization that is naco naco and other non governmental organization who has started a number of program programs uh, this uh, to prevent the spreading of hiv infection which includes making blood from blood bank safe from hiv when they are collecting the bloods from blood bank it should be free from hiv ensuring the use of only disposable needles and syringe free distribution of condoms controlling drug abuse uh, advocating safe sex and promoting regular checkups for hiv suspectable populations so infection with hiv or having aids is something that should not be hidden uh, since then the infection may spread to many more people so it should be reported immediately so the next one is cancer it's a alarming disease nowadays which is inherited from the one generation to the another generation it cannot be spread it's not a communicable one it okay it is inherited from one generation to another generation so cancer is defined as an uncontrolled division or proliferation of cells without any differentiation the multiplication of cells continuous multiplication of the cells is 
may cause cancer so characteristics of cancer cell the cells divides repeatedly with uncontrolled cell division the cancer cells do not require extra cellular growth factors so actually normal cells our body cells have the ability to control the growth of the cell so that is called as contact inhibition but cancer cells will have lost the property of contact inhibition due to repeated division cells form a large mass of tissues which is called as tumor okay so cells pass out from the tumor to an uh, sorry due to repeated division cells form a large mass of tissue called as tumor the cells pass out from tumor to a new site for forming secondary tumor from one place it will move to the another place it will form a secondary tumor so here we have a term called as metastasis the invasion of cancerous cells from one part to the other part by body fluid is called metastasis you will get this question in two mark okay so the invasion of cancer cells from one part of the body to uh, one part of the body to other part by the body fluid is called metastasis tumors are of two types that is benign tumor and malignant tumor so benign tumor is non cancerous tumor do not show any uh, meta metastasis and is non invasive it stops growth after reaching a certain size it is less fatal to the body but cancerous tumor which shows metastasis and thus invade other body parts it shows indefinite growth as proliferating cells increasing in in uh, number called uh, neoplastic or tumor cells which will grow rapidly invade and damage the other tissues it is more fatal to the body so here we have a different types of cancers in male and female so female they may get breast cancer lung stomach cervical colorectal near uh, in the large intestine they will get colorectal cancer in male esophagus lung stomach liver prostate and colorectal cancers so cancers that cause most the most death in 2007 that is lung stomach colon liver and breast so types of cancer four different types of cancers we have carcinoma melanoma sarcoma and leukemia so carcinoma is a type of cancer of epithelial tissues melanoma it is a cancer of melanocytes of skin sarcoma it is a cancer of mesodermal tissues leukemia and lymphoma it is a cancer of hemopoietic cells that is in the blood cells so one more thing that is biological agent also may cause cancer that is oncogenic viruses have uh, cancer causing viral oncogenes so normal cells normally our cells have a genes called oncogenes or proto oncogenes which is just present in inactive state but under certain condition due to our habitat also this oncogenes may be converted into cancer causing oncogenes okay so we cannot say that uh, our generation doesn't have uh, cancer so we people will not get because of our habitat also may the cancer the people will get cancer because of oncogenes which is present in our body in inactive stage so the next one causes of cancer so how the cancer is caused so normal cells transform into cancerous neuroplastic cells by physical chemical and biological agent the agent name is called as carcinogen so four different agents we, uh, sorry three different agents we have physical agent by uh, ionizing radiation like uh, x rays gamma rays non ionizing radiation like uv rays chemical agents like tobacco smoke uh, sodium azide methyl ethane sulfonate this is all chemicals may cause even the dyes what they are using human beings are using the dyes and all right so that also may cause cancer biological agent we discussed just now oncogenic virus and uh, cellular oncogenes also have the ability to cause cancers so you can see here normal cell and the cancer cell normal cell has large cytoplasm single nucleus single nucleolus fine chromatin but here you can see cancer cell small cytoplasm multiple nuclei multiple and large nucleoli coarse chromatin here also in this cancer cells how it is dividing in blue color and the normal cells which is which is in the normal position okay so detection how to detect how to detect the cancer so first method is biopsy and histopathological study 
So tissue and blood and bone, bone marrow test, these are the initial stage of the cancer. We can do uh, tissue and blood and bone marrow test for increased cell count in case of leukemia, blood cancer. Biopsy of a piece of suspected tissue, they will cut and they will stain and examine under the microscope, which will be done in the laboratory. Then radiograph like X-ray, CT, computerized tomography used to detect cancers of the internal organs and uh, computer tomography use X-rays to generate three-dimensional image of the internal of an object. MRI also they can go, they can go for MRI scanning and antibodies also against cancer specific antigen will be produced in the body. So treatment of cancer, three different treatments are there along with this one more also there that is immunotherapy, surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy. So surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy and immunotherapy. Three methods are there to treat the cancer. So surgery, removal of cancer cells using surgery. Radiotherapy, destruction of cancer cells using radiation. Chemotherapy, destruction of cancer cells using drugs. So treatment, surgery, tumor cells are surgically removed. Radiation, tumor cells are eradicated lethally, taking proper care of the normal tissues. So the next one is chemotherapy. Cancer cells are killed by uh, specific part. Uh, actually, they will treat, kill the cancer cells specific uh, for particular tumors. Majority of drugs have side effects like hair loss. Most of the cancer patients, they will go for chemotherapy. Uh, actually, they will remove the hairs because more hair loss will be there by using different drugs. And that last one is immunotherapy. So under immunotherapy, it involves using, uh, use of biological response like modifier, like alpha new interferons. We studied about interferons in the beginning in uh, innate immunity, cytokines barriers. So alpha interferons is a protein which activates the immune system to detect and the cancer cells and destroy them. Most cancers are treated by combination of surgery, radiotherapy and chemo chemotherapy. All three together they will do to treat the cancers. Okay. Ma'am. Yes. Anemia means what ma'am? Anemia is a uh, less number of hemoglobin. The person who is having less amount of hemoglobin. They okay. are anemic. They are anemic. Okay. So any doubts? No ma'am. Okay. Uh, anything you want to ask? Any clarifications, any doubts? Ma'am, cancer will not pass through sexual contact, ma'am? No. Okay. It is inher uh, inherited from parents to the offspring. Generation by generation, it may transmit. But we can prevent that by uh, yearly detection. We can detect and we can cure that. Okay? Any doubts? What are the four methods of what are the different methods of cancer detection? Can anyone? Surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, immunotherapy. That is treatment. Oh. I'm asking detection. So detection, how to do here? Can anyone say detection? Biopsy. CT uh, scan. Uh, CT scan. What is biopsy? Um, so the part, the suspected part, they will cut thin section of the part where they will cut and they will stain and they will examine under the microscope. Okay, that is the biopsy. Okay, so different types of cancer, four names I said. What are the four names? What are the four names? Carcinoma. What are the four different types of cancer? Four different types of cancer. Carcinoma, melanoma, sarcoma, and leukemia. Okay. So uh, which two things are called as primary lymphoid organs? Which is called as primary lymphoid organs? Harish, are you there? 
which is called as primary lymphoid organ. Bone marrow, ma'am. Bone marrow and? Tonsilla, ma'am. Thymus. Bone marrow and thymus. Okay, they both are called as primary lymphoid organs. Secondary lymphoid organs, which is called secondary lymphoid organs. Lymphatic vessel. Mm. Spleen, lymph nodes, and malt. What is malt? What is malt? The mucus. Yeah, mucosal associated lymphoid tissues. Okay, that is called as malt. So, any doubts? Okay, thank you, children. Take care, be safe, and stay um, home. Happy day. Yes? Lesson over, ma'am. No, still it's there. We'll continue in the next session. Thank you. Okay.